Let's be real. We got a couple of great topics for you today, and we're going to start in the MLB. All right, I got something on my mind I want to talk about. The pitch clock is the stupidest thing to happen in baseball ever, literally ever. It is the dumbest thing in the world. There is a tie game in the bottom of the ninth inning. It was the Red Sox Braves the other day. I know it's spring training, but the game ended in a tie because the batter didn't step into the dang box. The pitch count is the dumbest thing in the world, and it will ruin baseball forever. See, I think um, I, I understand where baseball, the Major League Baseball, is trying to go. They're trying to shorten the games and get other fans uh, interested in their game. But, I mean, if you are going to introduce a pitch clock, which, as as uh, my friend here said, thinks it's really dumb. I think you have to at least give someone a warning if it's in the last inning. Like, to end it the way you did is absolutely insane. Here's the thing, though. Even with a warning, you're not changing the game of baseball for the positive by adding a pitch count. You're literally, they already clocked it. They're reducing game time by an average of less than 20 minutes. It's the difference between two hours and 50 minutes versus two and a half hours. If somebody actually wants to spend the time watching a game, that 20 minutes of time is not going to be life or death. It's not going to change anything. And beyond that, the game feels so rushed. Every single pitch having to be within 15 seconds if there's a runner or if there's no runners on and 20 seconds if there is a runner on. It's ridiculous. Like that's not gonna make the game any better having to rush every single pitch. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, when I was watching, I didn't watch the whole game, but I was watching some of the highlights. It felt like every pitch I, I was being rushed. Like it's like if you're in a, if you're in line somewhere, right, and you're trying to think of something else you you want or whatever, and you're in like Wendy's, right? There are tons of people behind you being like, "Come on, man, hurry up!" Like it, that's how I felt watching the game. It felt like everything was rushed. There was like felt like there was a strange pressure just like watching it like everything was way too rushed definitely yeah they're having to literally pick pitches faster it completely eliminates the chess game between pitcher and hitter trying to basically outwit each other and figure out who's going to make the other one suffer worse defeat from the struggle of having to decide Oh, should I stay in the box? Should I get out? Is the pitcher icing me? Is the pitcher not icing me? Is the hitter icing me? What is, am I going to throw? Oh, I'm going to shake off the catcher because now he doesn't need to know this. And oh, oh, my time's up. Oh, that's a strike. I lose. Yeah, that's literally how the game is going. So I, I got a question for you. I, I know you've uh, looked into this. Um, the pitch clock right now is 15 without a runner on base and 20 with a runner on base. In the previous years, what was the average time between each pitch? That's the thing. Like, we're literally not saving that much time. In 2017, the average pace was the highest that it has ever been in MLB history at 23.8 seconds. 23 seconds. So you're saving three seconds per pitch that's going to save the game of baseball? No. The only thing it's doing is rushing the game. They're literally trying to save time in baseball games by establishing this pitch clock but the thing they don't understand is it's going to put more stress on every single pitch because imagine throwing 100 miles an hour and having to do it every 10 seconds for an entire game do you think you're going to be able to last as long if you waited 30 seconds between pitch absolutely not and they're already starting to pull starters way earlier and that's why games are becoming longer and longer is literally every inning towards the end of the game multiple times in the inning they're switching pitchers pitchers don't go deep into the game anymore and if pitchers aren't going like look at the old days it was literally pitchers throwing nine inning games every single time and that brings up an interesting point because i remember last year i was starting to get more interested because there were more like no hit games and i was getting more interested in battles between pitchers and people were getting pulled after three four innings and it felt like we were getting or at least me i was getting ripped off from what i wanted to see i wanted to see the best pitchers the best starters going up against each other that's a good point if you make them throw faster they're not going to be able to last as long into the game so now they're going to be getting pulled after two innings or three innings at the top yeah exactly it's ridiculous and if you look at last year when you're talking about that there are so many pitchers last year 
that were throwing no hitters or perfect games going into the fifth or sixth inning and because of their either pitch restriction or their manager deciding and eh, it's better to put this in the bullpen's hands they're pulling the pitcher and it's ruining a lot of pitchers chances to a go deep in games but b have amazing performances that a are going to make them be more impressive like it's a lot more impressive seeing somebody throw a no hit nine inning game than it is a five no hit nine inning game and that's why team no hitters have become so prevalent now and everybody's praising these team perfect games and team no hitters it doesn't matter it's a team no hitter you threw six pitchers i don't care i want to see one pitcher do it like the old days that's a good point I, you know i think i think baseball is is losing ground i would say to like basketball and football as popularity like football and basketball i'm pretty sure have surpass baseball by far and they're trying to change the game to get more fans but they're making really dumb decisions i mean the extra innings rule of putting a player on second base that's like making teams go for two-point conversions after the third overtime in college like you're just doing something gimmicky to try and shorten a game and and at that point do you even feel good just because you got like a hit and the guy from second scores, do you even feel good you got that run? Like, it's, it's pathetic. And beyond that, when you're talking about a runner at second, they're trying to shorten the game by adding a runner at second. That's the best part of the game. If you're in extra innings, everybody's glued to their TV at that point. You would be much better off <laughs> if the only thing you could watch in a baseball game, which you pick the first inning, the second inning, the third inning, the fourth inning, you would pick the extra inning performance to see who got to battle and win the game. Instead, they're throwing a runner on second and they're going back to little league rules. It's ridiculous and it's not going to increase viewership. And when you're talking about trying to make the MLB like the NFL or NBA, they really are. They see their viewership and they want a piece of that. The problem is it's such different games. Fans of baseball love baseball because it is literally a battle between the pitcher and the hitter it's a slower game. There's a lot of buildup between it. It's a very skilled game having to hit a round ball with a round bat going 100 miles an hour from 60 feet. There's a lot of different skill set in baseball than it is in basketball and football. Now, I'm not saying one's better or worse than the other. It's just different. And when you start trying to compare a sport that has never had a pitch clock or any clock for that matter is one of the only sports that doesn't. It's a team sport. And now you start comparing it to the N NFL and NBA. It's it's completely it's comparing apples to oranges. You can't do that. It's only going to ruin baseball for its true fans, but it's not going to pull people who like the NFL into baseball now that you added a 15 second pitch clock. It's just not going to change the game. It would be the exact same as trying to get golf to be sped up for people that don't like golf. It's not going to make anyone like golf more if they don't already like golf it's a five hour round it's not going to increase the joy of the game for people who already don't like it and another thing see I, baseball is just making lots of mistakes i believe now on the double headers they switch them so that the second of the double headers is seven innings and somebody threw a no hit double header so it was only seven innings but guess what? It doesn't go in the record book as a no-hitter because he didn't pitch all nine innings. So you're trying to change, again, the sport in ways that are just ruining it to make it, I guess, shorter. But as we talked about, it's not even shortening the games that much. By the way, it's seven innings for both games of the doubleheader, not just the second one. So it's an even stupider point that you were <laughs> making. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I didn't even realize that. But yeah, that, that's true. I mean... Why even have double headers at that point? I mean, that you're just playing like a game and a half, pretty much. Like, come on, baseball, what are we doing? And I know, I know, baseball's having some issues, just like in my opinion, football and basketball with their analytics. Everybody's swinging for the fences, and they're not really going for the for the hits to get on base anymore. And I think that's just a sports thing in general right now. Every sport is having issues with analytics. NBA players are just putting up threes every every possession now. Like, it's going out of style. And in the NFL, we're going so far away from the run game that when a team does do some running, 
that they're one of the best teams in the league because nobody else is doing that. They're just chucking long balls. <laughs> they're just chucking. Nope. <laughs> just chucking up those long balls. <laughs> they're just throwing deep balls. And <laughs> Man, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think that just all sports are having issues with analytics and trying to change the sport to gain fans isn't going to do anything. If anything, you're just going to lose the fans that you already have. And another thing with this is I remember in Little League uh, when I was playing as a pitcher and as a batter, there was a mental aspect of having to get ready. If it's in the last inning and you're down by a run and you're being rushed to get into the batter's box by seven seconds, I mean, that just ruins it. Like, I remember sitting there trying to hype myself up, like, I got to get a hit, I got to get the team going forward. And to take that away so that you can get a pitch off in 15 seconds or 20 seconds or less, I think it's just, I think it's just uh, very dumb. And it's going to ruin not only the viewership, but also the players playing. They're not going to care as much. It's going to be more of a reacting than a mind game, than a mentally getting yourself ready. It's just can you react to what's going on in a very short amount of time? And that's not baseball. And we're talking now comparing Little League to pros, and the mindset difference is night and day. And it always seems like pros have their minds together because that's how they perform at the best level. But all of these guys have shrinks, and sports psychologists are helping them to be able to prepare. Baseball is one of the games that is not reactive. It's proactive. You have to actively go up there thinking, I'm going to get a hit. You can't go up there thinking, I'm not, don't strike out, don't do this, don't do that. You have to be active in your mind and have a great mindset. And you just took the mindset out of baseball with that. Exactly. I mean, just ask Sean, man. I mean, he got the yips thrown from short to first. The second to first, that's even worse. <laughs> that's a good point. Perfectly said. Let's pull back for a second. We kind of got off track and off topic here. Pitch count is stupid, but I like how you said that. You're going to lose fans that you already have. You need to keep your fan base and not piss off your fan base just to go get more fans. Otherwise, ultimately, you're only hurting your sport. So to summarize, the pitch count is stupid. It's not going to help make games that much shorter, especially when you have more pitchers coming in and more time in between pitching changes. And it's only going to hurt starters. It's not going to make the game more enjoyable. MLB needs to change that. It's ridiculous and sucks the fun out of viewing it. Very good points. Now, guys, I got some breaking news. I've heard from my sources in the NBA that uh, that the owners are putting something into the players' contracts that you will not believe. Did you know that it is now mandatory for your players to miss a quarter of the season? A quarter of the season? Listen... <laughs> I know these guys are starting to miss a lot of games, but how bad can it be? They're missing, what, 10, 15 games per season now? Funny you should ask. Now, I'm not just coming up with this. I'm getting this from TrueHoop.com. In the past three seasons before this season, stars in the NBA have missed an average of 28 games per season. 28 games. Yeah, that is over a third of the year. It is absolutely insane. And again, don't ask me what they qualify stars as being, but the fact that the quote unquote stars of the league are missing an average of 28 games over the past three seasons is ridiculous. Yeah, like I'm okay with players getting some rest when you're bringing it up, but the fact that it's 28, that means there's 28 times throughout the year that families and kids and grown men pay good money to go watch these stars perform and don't get to see them because they're taking rest days. Now look, I went to go see Tom Brady in his last regular season game this year with the Bucks, and they he only played a quarter and a half. But I would much rather have gone and see him play that quarter and a half than going to a game and just the player not playing because they stubbed their pinky toe that morning. Not even that, it's just load management. They're having 15 games of load management too. Exactly, it, it, it's absolutely insane.
And look, I, I love the NBA, right? I, it's my favorite sport personally. But at this point, it's almost nauseating to watch, to watch a game expecting the stars to play and not. And I do fantasy, as much of you probably do, and I have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on my team in fantasy basketball. What I'm about to say is not a joke. I don't think there has been one game where either one of them hasn't been out, just completely out, or day to day due to a random part of the body. Because each game, it's something different, but each game, they're day to day. And I know LeBron just injured himself and he's gonna be out for a while. I'm not saying players should be playing through actual injuries, but these fake injuries of, well, they're calling them injuries, but they are fake injuries. And it's just load management. This has to stop. I think Anthony Davis is a poor example just based on he literally injures himself playing 2K. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and look that one up there for you. So I have a counterpoint to this, and I want to see what your opinion is on it. What do you think coaches and owners should do when players come in complaining of something, nagging them, a pain or something? And even if it's something as simple as a toe or an elbow, and those are the times that they get day to day and get off that night, do you think it's a player issue that they need to be sucking it up more? Or do you think it's a coaching issue that they need to then say, no, you're fine. If nothing's actually wrong, send them out there to play. Because they obviously don't want their players to then be hurt for the next 15 games because they forced them to play. So what do you think it is? Do you think it's a player issue or a coaching issue? That's a great question. Um, what I think it comes down to is ultimately the players. If you look in the NFL, when they're playing games, they are always getting injured. There's probably an injury on every play, but they're not coming out on every play. In fact, the coaches and the training staff and the doctors are having to pull NFL players from going out and playing. So ultimately, while yes, maybe the coaches could be pushing or the training staff could be pushing and saying, you're fine, go out and play. I think it ultimately comes down to the players. And that's something that the NBA needs to fix. We're gonna get into this at a later time on how they can fix it, but I have some stats and, and whatnot from some of the greatest players of all time playing back in the 80s and the 90s. And I think you're gonna be absolutely astounded by these. So I wanna start with a player from my favorite basketball team, the Boston Celtics. In the 80s, Larry Bird. I want you to take a guess. How many times did he play at least 70 games. Is this before or after laying cement? <laughs> uh, it's a fair point. This is throughout his entire career. Okay, that changes things. Um, in his 13 season career, I'd probably guess at six or seven times. Well, unfortunately, you are incorrect. I'm gonna go through this. He has played over 70 games in 10 out of the 13 seasons. And that includes one season after he absolutely destroyed his back. Okay, so starting from his rookie year, he played 82. Then another season of 82, 77, 79, 79, 80, 82, 74, 76. And then again, you get that injury where he only played six games. But then the very next season, he played 75 games. Now his last two years, he was injured all the time I mean, when you broke your back, which he quite literally did, it's going to be very difficult to play that many games. So I'm just eliminating the last two seasons of his career. Yeah, we're also talking about a man who had to quit basketball due to an injury, not someone who then goes on mm -hmm. to have another 20-year career. Yeah, exactly. And one more thing you need to think about, the amount of physical play that there was back in that day I mean, if a modern NBA player played in that era, they'd be taken out on a stretcher and rushed to a hospital after the first five minutes of the game. I mean, you can look up videos such as in the NBA Finals, 
where Kevin McHale of the Boston Celtics clotheslined Kurt Rambis. What did Kurt Rambis do? He immediately got up and tried to start fighting Kevin McHale. Now, do I think that the modern NBA players should be playing that physical? No. Do I think modern NBA players should be playing hurt? No. But it is a complete different mentality than what it was back then. Kevin McHale had a broken foot and he continued to play because his team had a chance to win the NBA Finals and he now has a permanent limp. Give me another guy with those stats. All right, I'm gonna go to the opposing team in the 80s with Magic Johnson. They started off in the same year. In his rookie year, he played 77 games. His next year, he played only 37. Now, I don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't around back then, but I'm assuming he had a pretty significant injury since he only played 37 games. Then after that, he went 78, 79, 67, 77, 72, 80, 72, 77, 79, and 79. And he came back, obviously, after his short retirement back in 95, where he only played 32, but I don't think anybody's worried about that seed. And this is, again, back in an era where the basketball was so much more physical than it is today. Lay one more on me. All right, I got a question for you. How many times in his career did Michael Jordan play 82 games in his career? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea. And the fact that I don't is crazy because to me, as a modern NBA fan, I sit here thinking it's impossible to play 82 games. Like there's no way. I can't even picture somebody playing 75 games, even 70 games. And you literally have talked to people who have played, what, 10 times in their entire career. So how many times has Michael Jordan played all 82 games? So in his 15 year career, he has played 82 games nine times. That includes one time in 2002 to 2003, where he was 40 years old. He played 82 games and averaged 37 minutes per game at the age of 40 and played all 82. From his rookie year, he played 82. The next year, he had a foot injury and he didn't play that many. He then went the next year after that, 82, 82, 81, 82, 82. 80, 78, 17. Now that 17 was when he retired and he came back at the very end of the season. So again, that does not count. But then the next years after that, during the three-peat were 82, 82 and 82. The fact that these players are playing in a much different time with a lot worse equipment, training equipment, shoes and everything, and they played that many games I mean, it's, it's honestly sad to think of how poor these players are doing nowadays. Okay, question for you. So these players in the old days are playing 82 games. Do you think the difference now, and obviously we're going to get into this in a later episode, but do you think the difference now is a mindset issue from money? Because if you look in the old days, players are playing to win. They want championships. Nowadays, do you think it's players playing for money and the fact they already have money in their pockets now that they don't want to get hurt and they want to just live the rest of their life? So if they have a little bit of an aching something, they'll just immediately shut it down because they don't care about winning. They have what they ultimately want, money. That's a great point, and I do think that has some to do with it. But another thing is I don't think that these players – care about the game of basketball as much as those players did like you said the money is part of it but they make so much money that you're probably getting people who don't love the nba or basketball playing because you can make a ton of money in the 60s and 70s a lot of those guys had to have second jobs while they were playing in the nba just to sustain themselves and their families so it's a completely different time where an average NBA player can make $20 million a year. It's definitely gonna change the mindset. This will be a really interesting conversation for us to have later about how do we fix that issue now? Because clearly the issue is not to scale back and only give players minimum wage and force them to go work other jobs, but that definitely would help a mindset thing. So this will be an interesting conversation to continue later. Do you have any final points about this? I think that 
with today's technology, with the shoes that are supposed to be better, with the training equipment, and the new recovery modalities, these players should be playing a lot more than they are. They definitely shouldn't be missing, on average, 28 games a year. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Give us a like. If you think we're wrong, comment down below. Until next time, keep it real.